Hello there. Well, I just got done porting this uh, LS3 intake. I had an extra one laying around and I had seen that some people had gotten good results by porting the LS3 intake so I figured I'd give it a try. I'd ported a couple of aluminum ones before. This is my first plastic um, OEM intake and I'll kind of show you guys what I did and uh, things I learned for if I do one again. First of all you'll notice that the o-ring or where the o-ring used to seat is gone. That's because I'm intending to use a uh, 102 millimeter throttle body. So I had to uh, open up the uh, opening all the way to the edges and this now measures about 100, 107 just over 107 millimeters uh, which means that uh, obviously you can't use the o-ring no more so you use in my case I'm using a, a holly uh, flat type of gasket uh, that'll seal you know this uh, this ring here, this round part, was still sealed against the flat gasket and the throttle body. So just know that if you do open this up to use a 102, uh, you will lose the O-ring and you'll have to go to that type of gasket. Uh, I got rid of the, the, I'm using my cell phone so excuse if it goes in and out of zoom, but uh, right here used to be the uh, EGR tubing that used to stick out probably up to here so that was a pretty good obstruction so cut that out and smooth out that surface uh, as you can see here there used to be three posts that uh, went up and down the middle and that kind of I guess if you want to say supports the intake even though it's still pretty sturdy without it but um, if you want optimum flow, those got to go. So I cut those out. And um, you can see here smoothed out where they used to be and where I made my cuts. And then uh, these had to be filled in with epoxy. Uh, also, if you see these lines here. These used to be uh, ridges that would stick out, you know, like flashing from when the intake was made so that all got sanded down smooth so if you run your hand over this uh, it actually feels pretty smooth and then uh, you might notice some of the companies or people that port them port these intakes they use what's called radius rods or bars and they're kind of I'm gonna use my pencil here but they're kind of rods that go along this edge right here like that and uh, they run along these edges you can see where I'm pointing at these edges here because it's a sharp edge so having the rod there helps the air go over it smoothly well I don't have that so what I did is I did notice that these edges were pretty sharp so I just kind of smoothed it out the best that I could uh, you know some sandpaper and stuff and so it's a lot smoother when you run your finger on it it won't cut you like before and so that should help I mean it'll be better than before so maybe later or on another intake I'll I'll play around maybe developing some uh, radius rods for that uh, so nothing crazy here just really opening it up for maximum airflow I would not do this for a boosted application because you're, lo you're losing the support the support columns uh, in the middle and then I learned that there is not a lot of material in, in the neck of the opening and so I had to put on some epoxy as you can see here it's still kind of ugly but I'll, I'll smooth it out later but some epoxy here, as you can see there, 
to kind of just strengthen these these areas these edges and also some of the bottom you'll see right now because it's really thin and it's really easy to go completely through the plastic and you can shine like uh, I would shine like a light on the bottom and you can see where it will start getting transparent so you got to strengthen those areas uh, on an NA application obviously it shouldn't be too much of a problem as long as you don't have any kind of uh, leaks or pinholes or stuff like that uh, but for a boosted application um, anything past 10 15 pounds I I would be very cautious and uh, just one quick look inside you can see there and now I'll show you the uh, underside so here's the underside where I put some epoxy there to strengthen some areas that were getting thin more epoxy where I filled in where I had to cut the columns out so JB Weld works fine and uh, it's uh, sandable and workable it cures quickly and uh, should be a permanent fix uh, still got to clean the intake inside but uh, as you can see I didn't mess with these ports too much uh, because to do port matching, uh, I don't want to open these up unless I have a template of the cylinder head so that I know that I'm, I'm matching it to the cylinder head and I'm not taking too much material off in one area and then creating like a wall or a ridge where the cylinder head might stick out. So I kind of left, uh, I left the, the ports alone. What I did do though is uh, around the lip, there used to be kind of an overhang like plastic you know and you can feel it with your finger so I just went with uh, uh, my Dremel and like an eraser bit since this is plastic and just smoothed it out and then just went over it by hand really quick and so I smoothed out the edges there just a bit just I don't know how much of a difference it'll make but you know can't hurt so I just did that and otherwise the ports themselves the openings are still stock and uh, the next thing to do is dip this thing in a big bucket of uh, the greaser and warm water so it'll loosen up any you know particles that are still in there anything like that uh, so that I can clean it out easier This is the cover that comes with them. I won't be using that. It just kind of builds up heat in there. But so anyway, everything else is uh, unmolested. So uh, probably try to smooth this out, and make it look a little bit prettier. Figure something out there. If I did this again on another intake, I would take a little less material here and therefore not, not having to reinforce around here. Uh, and then it would look completely stock from outside. Nobody would know that the intake's been touched. So I'll probably do that if I do another one for somebody or a friend. But anyway, this is going to go on my C6 along with the 102 millimeter throttle body and a big cam from Brian Tooley specs on the cam uh, not 100% sure yet but it's going to be on the big side so if you want to see if you want to go through the trouble of doing this I would only do it for an application big cam bigger cubes where you know that you're going to need that extra airflow because these stock actually flow pretty darn well uh, but for those type of applications, some guys have seen 15, almost 20 horsepower to the wheels, which is not bad. For an amateur like myself doing it, if I got 10, 12, I'd be happy. Anything more than that would be icing on the cake. And I am going to test it on the dyno once I do the cam swap 
I'll probably do the cam swap, leave the stock set up, then put this bad boy on there and see what it does. Uh, so anyway, just sharing it with you guys. You can do it if you don't want to pay some shop 350, 400 bucks. Uh, sandpaper and a Dremel will do it uh, to cut those posts in the middle. I got a, a long, like sawzall, a thin sawzall blade, and uh, they sell handles that you can use, or you can tape up the end and you can just get in there, cut them, and then just by hand, uh, sanding it down, 80 grit. 180 and then uh, 300 something to kind of finish it off that's pretty smooth after that if you want to go smoother then uh, you know go for it but not too hard to do except for the radius rods which some people say make a big difference but we'll see I'm just uh, your everyday guy uh, with a weekend project just learning and having fun as I go like I said if there's any gains at all I'll be a happy camper anyway have a good one